Hey, how's it going guys? In today's video, we're going to be taking you through another online blitz game in the A3 Sicilian, as I know many of you enjoy seeing. And whilst I've had videos in positions starting from E6 and positions from Knight to C6 and G6, G6 being the main line, I had a bit of a different response in this game, which is E5. E5 is a move that is trying to play against the fact that you haven't put a knight on f3, which is the main line in the Sicilian, and black obviously can't push e5. So my opponent thinks, okay, if he's not going to take central space, I'm going to take central space and clamp down on the d4 square. But this is a move that I love to see, because I get my setup exactly how I want, with knight c3, bishop c4, this sacrifice doesn't work because the c pawn has been moved, where after takes d5, you can throw in a check here. So black has to block of a piece, you trade, drop the knight back, and you're up a piece. Now, that doesn't work in openings where c5 hasn't been played, like, let's just say for the sake of argument, um, like this. Oh, wait, sorry, like this, then the pieces are forked, and there's no check on this diagonal, because the c pawn hasn't moved, and there's a knight in the way. Even if there wasn't a knight there, say, something like this, then you would have c6 to attack the bishop, right? That isn't the case in this opening, though which is part of why it's really effective, this knight c3, bishop c4 setup, because no sacrifice followed by d5 fork works due to this check. So my opponent just develops normally, I go d3, this is the setup I want, I want e4, d3, knight c3, and bishop c4, with an aim of controlling the central d5 square, a square that my opponent has weakened massively, because he pushed e5, rather than leaving the option open of going pawn to e6 to control it. My opponent can never control this square with a pawn, unless I take something on one of these squares and allow this pawn to recapture, right? But I'm not going to do that, because, you know, I want this hole there to be utilised by my pieces, and as you saw from the thumbnail, that's exactly what happens later in the game with one of my knights. Which is why I play the move bishop to g5, because I'm just going to take. And that's kind of odd, because you might be saying, why why don't you wait for h6? Like, if you're going to take, okay, why don't you just develop and wait for h6 and then take? Okay, you're not wrong. In a dream world, I'd love to see h6, and I win a tempo, right? Because I was going to take anyway, but he threw in h6. But my opponent has the option of playing a move like knight e8 and trying to trade the bishops, right? The reason I want to take the knight for my bishop is because my dark squared bishop can't control the d5 square, right? It's a classic positional idea. Typically you want the bishop pair, but in this case I don't want the bishop pair because this bishop can't go on d5. This bishop can only go on the dark squares. This knight is literally controlling d5. So when I take it, I remove a piece of mine that can't control d5, and I remove a piece of his that is controlling d5, right? So now all three of my minor pieces can control d5, and only two of his can, because this is a dark squared bishop, right? Classic positional idea. So I go knight g to e2. I don't go to f3 because I want to put this knight there and have the option of swinging this knight to c3 to support it. We have d6. I play f4 which is a technically a mistake because after takes and takes my opponent can play knight e5 attacking my bishop because basically I give him the e5 square by allowing him to take, right, freeing up the square for his knight. I'm not too worried. The computer says it's a better position for black, but I feel like it's easier for me to play. 
because these pieces are all staring down this weak square. But my opponent gets some counterplay, attacks my knight. I put my knight in the middle of the board. Bishop g4. My queen is looking in really bad shape here. And I only have one move. Well, I can play knight e2. But realistically, I only have one move to save the queen, which is queen b1. I don't know why the computer gives that an inaccuracy. That's its favorite move. So I don't know about that. And my position looks a bit weird. My king looks really, really vulnerable with all these pieces firing on this side of the board. It's actually quite hard to attack my king. Now, I would love to castle queenside, but, you know, these bishops aren't going anywhere anytime soon. So we have rook c8, preparing ideas of c4 eventually. I go queen a2, controlling the c4 square with three pieces now, compared to my opponent's two pieces. Bishop e6, threatens to take my knight, and I castle. My opponent could have played that better. He has bishop h4, g3, knight f3, king f2, queen g5. And this is very difficult to defend with white. But, I don't know, it's, it's not completely over. Like, if I take, then it's over, because then the queen gets in. But if I don't take, it isn't obvious how black is going to break through. He's got ideas like f5, but that weakens his diagonal, so maybe he has to wait to move going king h8. It's not simple. Well, my opponent doesn't do that. He retreats his bishop like that. And I now get to castle. We have knight to g4. Trying to look at some of the weak squares in my position. <clears throat> but he does take his eye off of c4, which I feel like kind of helps me. So I go rook a e1. Controlling this e3 square because its pieces are looking a bit menacing, right? I, I don't really want to allow anything there. If I play a move like h3, then I'm a little bit worried about ideas like this. And this bishop just being really strong on this diagonal. Maybe I didn't have to worry about that. I just didn't want to allow it. So bringing the rook into the game can't be bad. Opponent goes a6, looking for b5, and then facilitating c4. It's a big part of what my opponent's trying to do, because if he can get, let's just say, I don't do anything, and for the sake of argument, my opponent gets c4 in. My bishop is trapped, but let's imagine he allows it to escape. My bishop is trapped behind this wall of pawns, right? And if I exchange here, my bishop just can't really do anything. Like, this pawn is just stopping it from getting into the game. So I don't want to allow this. It's um, It, it, it would just really kill the activity of my bishop, which is one of my better pieces. Considering my opponent's pawns are lined up on dark squares, I'd like to keep my bishop active, staring at the f7 pawn. So I go a4, trying to stop b5. My opponent plays bishop to b2. I attack it. And he goes queen h4, threatening mate in 1. So you might be looking at g3. Sorry, h3. But I didn't like this move because I felt like it opened up a lot a lot of um, dark squared holes in my position. So I opted for g3, attacking the queen instead of the knight, because attacking the queen is a bit of a bigger threat. And also opening up the rook's defense of h2. So the queen drops back, defending the bishop, because both of them were under attack. And I was trying to make ideas like h4 work, trying to force the queen off of the diagonal. But after queen h6, oh, I actually have knight to e7 check. But this, ah, it, it doesn't look right. I win an exchange, sure. But these pawns are way too weak. Like, these 
my opponent could even play moves like bishop to e3 check moves like g5 moves like f5 i didn't see the point in opening up my king so drastically just for an exchange now if i was going to win a piece outright then maybe because this is an important attacking piece but this rook isn't is it's, it's not doing any anything on the king side so i don't go for that instead i go for knight to f4 trying to cut the connection between these pieces and trying to facilitate some trades because after we get these trades i like my position more my opponent's lost both his bishops and he had the bishop pair right my dark squares are very weak and he just traded off his dark squared bishop for a knight so we each have a knight but after knight e5 i move my rook we go c4 takes takes and we get the position from the thumbnail this knight is decent but it can't get in anywhere because my pieces monitor in the squares that it would like to go to my knight seems to be doing a bit of a better job because so many of black's pieces have to monitor the squares so my point is right this knight is monitored by the queen and the rook right even if it gets to those squares it's not doing anything my knight however this knight has to control b6 this rook is controlling c7 this queen is controlling e7 just for the sake of uh, demonstration and f6 is controlled by the pawn and the queen that's a lot of pieces to monitor one piece and those pieces are kind of stuck in their positions because if i do get into these sorts of squares it's going to be really devastating whereas my opponent his knight isn't going to do a whole lot of damage if it gets in so while the computer gives plus 0.68 this is a lot easier to play with white especially considering how weak these pawns are they're, they're, they're big targets so my opponent goes b5 because i'm a, i'm attacking b7 we trade and i could take this pawn but wow it allows knight to e3 not gonna lie i didn't see this move i can't take because the queen hangs I guess my opponent isn't threatening to take. I suppose he's attacking c2. But it is, it's not a nice position. Also, there's just ideas like rook b8 going after the b2 pawn. So I didn't want to allow the b file to open. Instead, I played rook f5. And the point is, I'm expecting queen to d8 to monitor all of my knight's movement. It's, it's a classic sort of dynamic between a bishop or a queen and a knight where the knight's forward movement is fully controlled by either a bishop or a queen so this is what i was expecting i also had in my mind that black could go to c1 which is what he does but i saw this was losing the reason this is losing is because i'm threatening knight e7 check picking up an exchange I've also got eyes on the b5 pawn, but that's not as important. But the problem is, if I if, if I play king to g2, then I mean my opponent just moves his rook. Knight e7 now isn't as good, and my opponent's fine. He's actually got quite a bit of counterplay on my position. But if I go rook f1, which is the only winning move. Then my opponent's queen is under attack and knight e7 is still threatened and the queen can't retreat in a way that defends e7 because the g5 square is cut off because that's how i attacked my opponent's queen in the first place that's why i was expecting queen to d8 and my opponent's attack doesn't work because after queen to d2 i have knight e7 check my opponent isn't threatening anything so the king moves I take the rook knight e3 forks my rooks i saw this all the way back when i played rook to um f5 because i have the move rook f2 attacking the queen 
so he can't take because the queen hangs and the, 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 the queen has to move to d4 to defend the knight because the knight is attacked and it's just game over I mean I can just get my knight out of the position I can even take the pawn because the queen's overloaded <laughs> but here my opponent actually just took the rook so I took his queen he takes my rook and I have queen d3 and the knight is under attack so my opponent takes the pawn I take the knight rook takes c8 and I'm just up a queen for a rook it's obviously completely winning now if uh, we took all the pawns off the board right then it might be a draw my opponent might be able to make a fortress especially if he's got a pawn or two and I've got no pawns but that isn't the case there is a lot of pawns left on the board and these pawns are very weak so my queen's going to be able to exploit them easily especially because of how far the king how far away the king is and the fact the back rank is vulnerable here I'm expecting my opponent to resign obviously he plays on uh, I win a pawn and here I threaten to win another pawn and after king g7 my opponent resigns so effectively my knight on d5 won me the game because it was able to go to e7 and win an exchange and that the knight on d5 was facilitated all the way back on move 2 move 2 essentially granted me access the d5 square I decided to go for the positional exchange of bishop for knight which is very very rare because I thought that the d5 square would be so important that it was worth giving up the bishop for and my opponent had some attacking chances that he could have done better with but it's not easy especially in blitz and yeah it came down to knight versus knight my knight was better than his knight. My opponent missed a sequence of moves that he needed to see. I think he probably missed rook f2. He probably missed that, where the queen's under attack, so this knight fork doesn't actually work. And here we just liquidate, and it's game over. So, if you guys stayed until the end of the video, then I just want to say thank you very much my channel's been getting loads of views recently and it's been really cool um it's, it's been really enjoyable been getting a lot of positive feedback so i really appreciate it um if you did enjoy the video please drop a like and subscribe i because i'm making videos like this every day every single day new video from chess centurion you can rely on that so if you want to see more you know drop, drop me a cheeky little subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.